And welcome to the Extra Base Podcast. I'm G Bay, and I'm um, joining me tonight. Uh, I've got Tim, and our special co-host for his uh, debut is Roger Morris, who actually has internet tonight, and it's not dial-up. So, uh, welcome, guys. Hi, Jay, how you go? Good, mate. Nice Good. to be here. Yeah, it's, it's nice to have you, nice Roger. To have you, mate. It's, um, it's been a little bit lonely without you, but it's, um, that's the way it is. And if anyone saw the um, the first two kids in our opening, that's um, the Hazel Boys um, representing the great McKillop Club out at um, out in the West. And um, we've got Logan, who's six, who plays in under 10s, who's the lefty at the start of that. And we've got the righty, who's Jaden, who's eight. So um, big shout out to you guys, and also thanks to Dino for the video. Um, yeah, it's always good to sort of get that sort of stuff, you know, some local stuff out out there. Ah, uh, look, tonight's guest. Um, yeah, look, it's um, going to be a big, going to be a big show. We've got um, Claude from the Penrith Baseball Club, who's the president out there. And we've also got the women's head coach, Keen Howard. So. Um, should be an interesting chat. Obviously, you know, Roger and um, Keen have gone head to head a few times over the, over the years in the women's league. So it'd be interesting to see um, see how they go tonight. Might have to separate them, but um, look, we'll, we'll bring them straight in. Hey guys, how's it going? Hey, how's it going? Very Hi. well, very well. Thanks Good for having us on. Yeah, not a problem at all. Roger, you've got to be nice. Um, I know that you play against these guys, so um, please. It's all right. Nothing but love. Nothing but love. That's good. We love love. We all love love. That's it. So, look, I, I think, you know, this is this is really the crust of, of what this podcast is all about, you know, getting in local clubs, having a chat to them, let them talk to us about what they're doing great out there and, um, you know, selling their products. You know, obviously, you know, tonight I'm going to ask a few questions, you know, both to Claude and Keen on, you know what it's, what what's happening out in Penrith. Um, obviously, they're doing a lot of good things. There a lot of promos and things like that. Obviously, I want to touch on the women's league. Also, want to touch on the you know the women's program out there. Plus, also some initiatives that they've put forward. So, um, look, I, I think before we start, uh, let's sort of I guess first of all, you know, Claude. Um, yeah, look, anyone that doesn't know who you are and what what you're about, um, tell us tell us your story. How you got into baseball? And yeah. Um, so that actually started now nearly 15 years ago. So that's how long I've been with Penrith. Um, I was attending my husband's trial for State League at that time. And funnily enough, the Fulham girls were there watching their brother, cheering him on. And um, Daniel Fulham's partner, Erin, they both approached me whilst I was holding my six-month-old baby saying, would I be interested in playing baseball? And essentially... I said yes, and it's just hasn't. I haven't looked back. So, from uh, trials, watching my husband, my now husband, trialing to being here now, I'm probably more involved than what he he is these days. So yeah, um, and always been second grade. Um, many uh, great coaches along the way, but if I'm being uh, totally honest, it's probably been the only last two to three years that I've actually started really learning what baseball's all about instead of trying to hit a ball and get on a base. Um, so, yeah, that's that, that's the crux of it for me. Um, and there's been plenty of people within the club that have helped me thrive personally and 
given me a nudge to just step into light roles from an assistant coach from way back, uh, what I'll say, 10 years ago, thanks to Tanya Oldfield and many others. I, I could drop so many names that have helped me along the way, but um, we'll be here all night if I keep talking about myself. <laughs> so, yeah. And, and look, and anyone that doesn't know Keen, um, yeah, well, I, I'll, I won't say too much about Keen at the moment. I guess um, we'll leave that for later on in the conversation. But Keen, for anyone that doesn't know you, just want to tell everyone a little bit about yourself. Uh, yeah, well, well, I just started playing baseball like everyone else, and like a, a young kid and just, yeah, I played, played through Kemp's Creek. I uh, started at Warragamba Rangers. No one really knows who they are. They're done and gone. But, um, yeah, they went to Kemp's Creek, then ended up at Penner. Uh, Went to the Orioles for my state league in 18s and um, ended up at Penrith for a long time. And then now I'm at a Borco, just playing around and having a crack. So, yeah, I mean, other stuff through there as well, but that's pretty much just the basis of it. So, yeah, now I'm coach of the women, so that's pretty fun. Yeah. So I guess the, the first thing that I really want to touch on is, um, Claude, what's it like being a female president president in a you know a male dominated sport like you know, it doesn't have its challenges is it is it good is it bad like let us know um yeah look i think i want to say it's actually quite accepting compared to what it might have been maybe mm-hmm. five years prior or prior to covid um i think that because it's been, women's are now getting well women's any sports is getting so much exposure that the acceptance is is quite um, high and availability and resources have become more so. So, and I've had a ton of support, especially with um, the new committee that I have, the executives that I I can't commend them enough. They just work tirelessly. And as you all know, we're all volunteers. Um, And I think the number one key with it all is being passion that first before anything, and then followed by knowledge and then structure. So those three things for me personally, have kept us uh, quite a stronghold and we're just sort of building around that and just trying to grow our community. I mean, as you can see, you can reflect on those photos alone. Um, just just some of the things that we've been doing really well. And I have to just call out um, Joel Berg, who is our promotions. He has just done a phenomenal job with all our promoting, marketing, whether it's, you know, you can see the pictures here alone, majority of that's all him, and he's pushed for us to get ourselves out there. He's really marketed us so well. So I've had a great team of executives, and I'll call them more than just executives, but my friends, baseball yeah. friends along the way, um, and they've, they've really helped make this club thrive and grow in the past 12 to 24 months uh, post-COVID, so, yeah. And I, I guess one of the one of the things that I always look at too, um, Penrith has always been a very family orientated club, and I, I guess a lot of that does show in in a lot of these photos. And I, I guess one of the, one of the big things that I always look at too, you know, is like everyone going to the Blue Sox game, for for example. You know, um, how did that come about? How did how did that happen? So um, our treasurer Mel. Um, she actually jumped on board with just heavily involving um, our club in these kinds of initiatives when she saw it pop up. That was the first thing she wanted us to be involved in That they've now that they've come back into the fray. I mean, I think even last year we, we dabbled a little bit into it, but not nowhere near as much as what we received this year. I think it was a sea of Penrith players, members, parents, volunteers, executives that turned up to the Blue Sox game just recently and, and it got a lot of great feedback, not just um, from our own members but from others within other clubs and just just the socials were flooding with just a lot of a sea of Penrith colours. So that was exciting um, to see, get, again, marketing ourselves. But just I think we just want to inject ourselves back into the world of baseball and Blue Sox are just, just coming back into it all and we're starting to really want to be a part of it all again. So it's, it's the same as tournaments, like everything that's coming. I think we've just just about entered nearly 
every tournament that's come about. So anything that's coming up baseball orientated where we can be involved, we're going to get involved. You sound like a proud mum. I, I am. I know. <laughs> I, that's exactly that. That is probably yeah. the best description. Um, and I mean, Ken could probably attest to that too, because, you know, many years back, I pretty much, you know, I near pleaded for him to come on board to help us with our women's and he's, he's not really left. So he's, he's been like a, a, a really a big part of our growth and uh, for me, support personally, a really big part. But yeah, I, I can't just single out one person. Everyone's worked so hard to just, I shouldn't say hard. I know smart's the, the, the right word, but yeah, we just, it's tireless. Um, yeah. We get the rewards when we, like I said, you look at those photos, that in itself, they, they tell us just how um, well we're going. That's the succeed there when we see it in the form of a photo alone um, and, and in many other ways also. So, yeah, definitely proud mum. I, I see, too, that you've got a, a lot Sorry of... Sorry about that. Someone's calling me. <laughs> You're famous, mate. Famous. <laughs> um, oh. Also see that... Um, I'm going to get a phone call all day. You know, like... Especially for for yourself, you know, you sort of you turn up, you do your job, you go home. You know, it's it's like a nine to five thing, but baseball it doesn't have that. No, baseball, you know, it doesn't. It, it Baseball's almost you. like the number one job, and my actual job is my second job. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, yes. I go to work. I go to work to have a break from baseball. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. And I guess the, the next what I'd like to do is bring Roger in um, into this bit of the conversation. Um, it's it's more around you know the state league. You know, obviously, you know there was there was separation from you know Penrith um, men's state league no longer being Penrith, and That's obviously that went to Greater Western, and then Penrith still remained as as Penrith um, for for the women's league competition. Um, right. you know, how was that as a transition? And obviously, you know, Roger Roger been involved highly in the in the women's game. Obviously, you know, he he knows more about the ins and the outs of, of the women's league. But you know, were were there challenges there or was it just, you know, business as usual? Um, honestly, not having state league anymore other than women's has enabled all of us to put a lot more attention back into the juniors, a lot of focus into juniors and build on our women's profile. So, um, for example, just the women's development programs that we're just trying to do, whether it's a winter run development program, uh, thanks to Sean this year, who's really picked picked that game up for us this year. Um, and I brought forward to our coaches if we could start to incorporate some of our junior girls in the junior league and senior league teams into our training regime for our women's state league so that they can transition out of, or should they want to further their themselves as baseball players for women's, they can transition from their senior league into women's state league. Um, so that was just one. It, it might not seem like a big initiative and, and there wasn't a lot of girls at the moment, but we've got a ton of girls coming through. Uh, so we really want to be able to provide provide that structure for them and, and give them a, a, a platform where they can just go, oh, great. So there's just once senior league is finished, that's not it for them. So, yeah, the transition um, from losing state league itself, I I think it hurt the club for those that had nowhere to go that were used to going into Penrith baseball. So now they've just had to get their mindset around, okay, do I go to – um, the greater western side or do I go to Blacktown? So that's kind of, yeah. for us, it doesn't yeah. affect. But for those players, exactly. it hurts. Claude, I mean, I was going to say, just picking up on that, there is a sort of from those learnings, is there there you know, a good argument to say splitting some of those junior associations away from that direct link to a to a state, state league side? So you've just said that they've got options to go to you know, they would have all just gone to Penrith, but now they've got yeah. options to go to either Greater Western, Blacktown, yeah, you know, Chiang Wai plays for the Borco. So, and it given and it's freed up the club's time for their volunteers, 
money, all those type of things to focus yep. on on the women's game and the junior development rather than trying to spread so few resources over such a wide, um, you know, offering of baseball. That's exactly what it is. You've nailed it. Yep. And Keen, you know, Yo. you being the, you know, the, the main man, so to speak, of head coach uh, of the women's, mate, you know, we know you're a busy guy. You know, you play first grade for Borka. And look, I won't hold that against you. Um, <laughs> Thanks. But, um, you know, like, how do you fit it all in? Oh, to be honest, like, it is, it is like Claude says, it's like you go to work to get a break. Um, I, my job is not as anywhere near hard as Claude's. I mean, when she did ask me to come on board and um, ask to help with the women's, I, I was pretty hesitant. I didn't really want to do it because I, I knew the time that was going to be involved. And I was like, oh, man, I don't have the time for this. I'll, I'll just come down and coach. You do everything else. So I was like, I'll come train you guys on a Tuesday. And then after Tuesday, you, you take it all over and you do what you have to do. And then, um, yeah, just uh, it went from just training them on a Tuesday. And Claude was like, come on, come on. Like, so I ended up full-time coaching it. But, yeah, I can't take, I can't take all credit for it. Um, Claude puts a lot of work in behind the scenes with all of it all. And also, like, along the way, I've had a couple of um, a couple of good, like, assistant coaches help me out a little bit. I've had Ray Tozer for a bit, and we have to be back on board this year. Uh, Dave Harris was there for a bit. Um, Sean Bowen, who's been on for, like, the last two or three years, I think, now. Uh, he's been a massive help. Uh, just a guy you can always rely on to, to be there. And that's, like, the biggest thing you need as assistant coach is just someone you can rely on to be there to help you and you know that they're going to be there. They're not going to just pull out the last second and go, oh, you know, got a broken toenail or whatever it may be. Like it just, you need a guy that you can always rely on. And and that was him as well. And we also had Pete Goldbold as well last year. who was really good. Um, he's been around the traps for years. I mean, I think at one point he might have even coached me. So, um, yeah, like it's it hasn't just been a one-man band like, there's a lot of pe- other people there in the in the picture that help out a lot, and um, yeah, I mean, if it wasn't for Claude and probably my partner Christina, I'd, I probably wouldn't be doing it. But uh, it's a it's a new challenge and it's it's fun in in points and then other parts. It's frustrating <laughs> as hell, um, and I understand now what my coaches see when I, <laughs> you know, when we I see that either when the roles are reversed, you know, you see the frustration and you understand it. That's why yeah, Diego is so great. Actually, while, while, <laughs> yeah. you say that, while you say that, Keen, um, Phil Hemmer's coming on after Christmas. And, um, oh, no way. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we will be asking him questions about yourself. So um, yeah. uh, stay tuned for that episode because... Uh, oh, will be. He'll be saying the yeah. same thing I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, uh, but, uh, what, do you guys, what do you guys think was the biggest um, breakthrough going to... You're coaching, Ken, and Claude, you're in the team. Um, I saw you guys on a Friday night and you guys were really focused on on your strategy in the game. So if you go, what was your click moment in in teaching the girls a bit more in depth into the game? I'm just curious. Like, uh, is it just something you've been working on or is it? It's like, Claude, do you like, want to, like, I, I'll, I'll answer, but do you have anything on it first or? Um, well, as as, player, as so women, it. as women playing, um, and we, uh, it, it, we don't want to fail regardless, like anyone, right? But we also don't want to cop the wrath from our coaches. So we, there's tensity. <laughs> the intensity to not fail is sometimes supersedes just relaxing and having a bit of fun and, and just making it flow, again, flow the way it should um, so yeah, like they our team is very intense. Like we've got the two two women's sides, right? So we have two parent sides. So one side tends to always be less intense, and our team is intense because we I think we're so scared to fail, not just for ourselves, but we don't want to let our coaches down when they put so we know how much work they they give up time to get us where we're getting. I mean, just look at the last few games we all oh, sorry the last five six games where it's clicked like you're just saying there rog um i think 
Sean especially has been pushing for us to communicate, as it has Key, and, and communication has been something we probably have been lacking because people, the girls are scared to to be confident and yell out and, and think they may make a mistake. So when of, of late they're just coming together with that communication and confidence and that's starting to show um, with, with I, I succeeding. That, what, the with, what, what are the punishments that you're in, imposing here, Key? Oh, look. <laughs> Have you not been around? Have you not been around to see coaches rip into their teams when they've just played Amen. like they should, they should know what they're doing, but they don't. So that's uh, that. Anyway, I've said no, my piece. Yeah, I, I got no punishments for them. Like um, that's why I love <laughs> like the, that's why I love the ladies that I coach because ninety percent of them are as hard on themselves as like I could ever be. Like I, I couldn't punish them because they're already as hard like my partner's worse than me when it comes to anything mm -hmm. to do with baseball like yes. if she fails my god just leave her alone for an hour because she just <laughs> she won't stop it <laughs> um she's like she's honestly like me like when i was younger and i failed like roger will tell you like he played with me for a fair few years like i hated i hated failing and yeah. everyone sort of knew it around me so um no i think like Caught cool, touching it, like um, I I I played state league for a long time. I played under a lot of good coaches, and I played at a reasonably high level. I'd say ridiculously high, but reasonably high enough to understand the intricacies of of playing the game and just the smaller things that need to be looked at. And I got a lot of young kids coming on board now that I sort of want them like they're. I look at them and I see really good baseballers. Like they're going to be you know, the next Emeralds and stuff like that if they keep working towards what they're doing. And they're in New South Wales squads already and all that type of stuff. Um, I'm just trying to teach them what they should already know. Uh, yeah. I see it through juniors in boys and even juniors in women's. Like, they just... Where I was when I was a kid, I feel like they're just behind, probably two, two years behind where they should be. They, they turn up to State League and they just... They don't understand the basic stuff. So we're getting them in state league at a point where, like, in 18s, we're just like, all right, let's run bunt plays, and they, they don't even know what you're talking about. Yeah. They hardly – hardly any of them can even bunt, let alone do a bunt play. Like, they don't know what a – like, you know, your regular crash picks are. Like, they've got no idea. And, like, that's what I'm trying to teach in the women's. We're not doing the, you know, the bunt plays, crash plays. We have, we have run over them, but we're not – I'm not worried too much about them in second grade yet. Um, it's more so trying to just get them ready for first grade and and higher things and just trying to get them to understand that, yeah, like it's not just, you know, picking up a ground ball and making one out and that's your job done. There's just there's so many other things to be done. And same with other players everywhere else. It's not just like watch the ball get hit and go, oh, God damn, like how good was that play? It's You've got to be a part of the game too. It's just because the ball wasn't hit to you doesn't mean you're just standing there watching the game go by. It's... You gotta be yeah. a part of it. So I'm trying to just teach them that and like I said, there's no punishments for my ladies. Like they, they punish themselves when they lose, they know they hate it just as much as I hate it. So there's no need. Can you I also think that you've undersold yourself a little bit? Um, uh -huh. my, my my research department tells me. Um, could be wrong. <laughs> New South Wales New South Wales under twenty threes. Um, that tells me it's a pretty high level that you've played at. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, Marrick, Marrick from first grade, Walker Mills first grade. That's that's no easy pass, mate. Like you and I don't even know in the glory days of Penrith, mate. You even had some some starts in first grade there. So, mate, don't undersell yourself. You know, you, you've always been you've always been there or thereabouts as a player. So, you know, I think that, you know credit where credit's due. You know, like you know, yeah, I, I, I mean, I appreciate that. I, I just don't like to oversell myself. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, it's not like anyone calls you the rig or anything. And talk to you about yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, Andy, Andy Courtney was going to come on, but um, yeah, talk all about the Chi Chi phenomenon. But, um, yeah, that, that's for another episode, too. Yeah, so. we'll, we'll see that. We'll leave that on for another one, I reckon. <laughs> but um, no, they're cool. Like, I think I enjoy coaching them just because their personalities are cool. They're all like really good people. And like I said, like, they just, they want it as bad as any first grader I've played with, and that's what I like to see. It's when I don't see players wanting it, that's when I sort of get disinterested. 
And, you know, it's they don't obviously if they don't want it, then there's no point wasting your time on it, right? Like they just yeah. So, so I, I guess one thing I want to touch on, Keen, because you made a really important point there too. You, you know, you're talking about you know, kids don't know, you know, the, the basics. You know, so what what are we what are you trying to do at Penrith to, you know, to overcome that? You know, what what are the what sort of things are you putting in place to ensure that, you know, in the future that these kids come straight up ready to go, knowing all the basics that they need to know? Um, look, I just uh, I think my my opinion in baseball is we don't teach coaches enough. I mean, we, our focus is all on kids, right? And that's great. But what's the biggest issue when kids are coming through? They they say, oh, you know, my coach never taught me this or I got here. Like, we never learned this back where we were. And I feel like um, coaches don't get – and, like, and it's great if you have a coach that was, you know, like an ex-big leaguer or someone that played state league or someone that, like myself, that played a higher level. It's great because – we've sort of, we've had that training from former coaches that have been in those levels. So it's, you know, we, we know these things and we learn them and we can teach these kids, but like mums and dads that get involved with table, obviously they're not doing bunts and stuff at table, but like your mums and dads that will do, you know, 12s, 14s, 16s or whatever their age brackets are now, they just don't, they don't know. Like the coaching courses now are just, they're so focused on Asada stuff and all the stuff that you don't really need to focus on um in my opinion like i would just <laughs> they just need to run more coaching courses teach teach coaches how to teach them how to swing about like i mean some of them are just guys that play b league and that's great because it's mad fun but you know these kids if they want to get somewhere you know like they're not going to learn anything from you know your old man going just hold it from here and just swing it as hard as you can like the baseball swings is so much mechanics involved. I mean, even now with all the analytics and everything else that goes with it, like it's so in depth and we're just, I don't think we're touching on the coaches enough. So at Penrith, we're sort of trying to get coaches involved with stuff to try and teach them to be able to teach their kids. I mean, Sean is great with that and that's, he's our development officer and he's, he's really pushing to help try and teach other guys how they can teach these things. Like, you know, all our relays, all our cutoffs, all that type of stuff, even just the basics of picking up a ground ball. Like, there's a lot of coaches that couldn't tell you how to do that. I mean, you could yeah. pretty much go to any club in any sort of league and just go, "Hey, can you just show me how to pick up a ground ball?" And they probably, I can probably guarantee you, they do it wrong. So, yeah, that's, that's more so what I'm trying to focus on is if if we can try and teach some coaches and teach whoever. Like, I want to teach these younger ones definitely, but um, even the older mums in our team, we can just teach them. And then one day they may come turn around and coach and they can they can then show them the proper form of what they should be doing and how they should be doing it. And then that should in turn fix the game, right? But it's a Yeah, and and like even you watch the headline there, you know, parkour hero. You love what you do with the team. That's that's what it's all about. It's, yeah. Not, not everyone can do that, you know, and I guess it's you know, parkour's one thing with, you know, state league and having the right fundamentals and and working on those sort of things is really important. So I guess it sort of then goes on, on to you, Claude. Like, how how do you make sure that, you know, your club or your coaches and are getting the right training and assistance to ensure that, you know, you're bringing up the, the next level of kid? Yeah, that's a good point. Um, and extending on that, what keen has been talking about, look, quite often at our monthly meetings, this is a hot topic. So coach depth has been pretty much number one and two on my list nearly every meeting because I can see that the passion is there and some people might get some online knowledge but they don't actually know how to carry it out practical and how to be that coach can that can get the drive out of a team and each individual. So um, we have been working, when I say working, more so trying to uh, – make discussions with Sean again our development officer this this season to come up with some programs ideas initiatives that can help um, like a coach course so in the past I think and Kean might have been involved in this one where we did invite some um, coaches and we had some experienced ex state league or state league players and, you know, um, I, I can't even remember everybody that was involved, but just to give them an idea of what needs to happen 
from the get-go, from T-ball, going into live ball, then getting into juniors and senior leagues and just we're kind of going through that now, which what stage, at what stage do we start to, to um, teach them how to respond to your relays at what, what age and what league level? So this stuff is now, like I said, it's hot topic for us to get that on track because before or well, before my time, I'm not really sure. I just came along as an assistant coach and trying to learn along the way, as Keen said, and now it's at a, a pivotal point where you can see when they're so young how far are these kids wanting to go with baseball and just yeah. how much they need it from the get-go. So we, we've, I think we've broken it down into about three state, or when I say three stages, as to like you've got your T-ball, which is they kind of run amok everywhere, but they still need those basic fundamentals. And then you start to get to the live ball side up to about majors or no minors where it's, um, we want to start to build into that the that structure of your relay. Like we, we're trying to work out at what stage they need to be knowing what um, structure and, and a league level they need to be learning. Like what should they be learning in each level? And now we're, now we're at that point where we've got to work out how do we train coaches to be at those league levels. And we're just... We're in that part. We're in that part now where we need to work that out and make that come into fruition. So it's so definitely what, being talked about. So what you've just spoken about, obviously, Tim, um, you know, Tav touched on this on Sunday night. You know about you know teaching kids leads earlier on, teaching them what they need to do, so when they get there, it's not so much of a, a task. Yeah, for them. and and we have that issue. Uh, mainly when we take the younger teams overseas for their first experience of US baseball. The rules we have here, rightly or wrongly, I'm not going to, that's a different show, um, are different than what they play in America. And so we spend a lot of time, and I touched on it the other night, you know, we have a a, a coaching clinic with the, the, the ex-big leaguers and the ABL guys who are associated with us um, with the young kids on day one teaching pickoffs, teaching leads, because it's not something that we do at that 10 to 12 level in Australia. But the kids need to know it to go overseas. Um, something I was going to ask, and, and I think you probably answered it, and I think it, it's pretty obvious from what Kian said, you know, there's not a huge difference between um, juniors, boys, and then moving into the women's rank. I think the same issues apply across the board. I was going to say, is there any, Ken especially, is there anything you have to do different when you're, you're coaching your state league women's side as opposed to, um, you know, if you're an under-18 state league coach or a third-grade state league coach? Is it exactly the same or do you have to take a, a different approach and then do you have to flow down to, to the juniors when their girls are coming through? Do you have to, to teach it a different way or is it just a lack of basic understanding? Um, yeah, like, uh, and this is where probably Claude gets the intensity level from me. Like, it's, I like to coach it how I was coached. Like, uh, when we were coached with men's, like, I want to teach, I want to get our women's levels to those levels. Like, I want them to yep. turn up the state league going, like, this is the real deal. Like, I'm not here to just turn up and hit a baseball. Like, I'm here to win at any cost and we're going to, we're going to rip in and we're going to do that. And we're going to, we've, we've been training all year for this. Like, let's get it done. And, um for so for me and and i have i do have a lot of ladies that sort of find me a bit off-putting i guess um at the beginning because i'm so intense um in the way i coach and how i want it done and i don't i understand failures and i understand errors and i understand like all those types of things um but i I don't accept laziness and that type of stuff because that's not that's just a, a personal thing. Like people are lazy. So it's not something, you know, it's, it's not coachable. Like everyone can put a hundred percent in, you know what I mean? Like okay. it doesn't take any, any, any different skills. Everyone can always give a hundred percent. So some people take it wrong at the beginning, but once they understand where I'm coming from and how I'm trying to coach it, they, they either, you know, probably leave, which I've had a couple do that because it sort of wasn't their thing. And that's fine. Like it isn't everyone's thing state league, you know, like, 
So, what, so what you're saying is it's a, it's say basically the same as it's no different being you know a women's league coach to a men's coach. It's it's just finding that that level of player engagement, whether it's that elite level. You know, we get a lot of yeah. 16, 17, 18 year old kids. If they want to go on to that elite level, you can coach them the way a state league coach yeah, well that- coaches and with that intensity. And then there's kids that will drop off, and they're the and they're the kids that might want to play a grade uh, park ball yeah. and have fun for the rest of their life. And I guess yeah. it's where is that spot in the women's league? Is that a difference between first grade and second grade? Or is it there is no park ball for, for women? So it's either they're at that elite level in first grade and second grade or they're off playing a different sport. Is that, uh, is that, isn't that an issue? Yeah, I think that is an issue. I mean, women's sport, especially in baseball, doesn't really have that park ball thing like like men have right like men can play park ball or they can go and play state league and that's the problem at the moment with state league women's it's like and and we because we have the two teams we are very lucky we can sort of accommodate those ones that have sort of got ability but just want to have a little bit of fun with it um they sort of they can still hang around and stay with us and it's great because they still turn up they still want to play and they still have a go um but yeah that is a problem we have first and second grade in women's, but um, yeah, if if they're not quite to that level or they they don't quite enjoy it, I think we do tend to lose some of them because of that, and it's a shame. But I mean, like yeah, like I said, I try to coach our women's team like it would be a state league because I don't want I don't want it to turn into a park ball league. Like this is what we're trying to do, right? Like, we're trying to make it a serious women's league. There wouldn't, there's no point just trying to make it a Parkball league. Otherwise, we could just do that anyway. We could, we'd just run it not under a state league title. So yes, um, into a team into a Sydney league. Metro. Mm, yeah, just enter a women's side into Sydney Metro. Yeah, and I mean, like the younger ones. Yeah, it's it's, it's different to coach the younger ones because um, they're still young girls, right? They don't take um, they don't take as easy as other uh, I like the boys. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a challenge, and that's what it's sort of I like about it because it's something different. Um, trying to figure out how to sort of make them click, and ha- how to try and explain it to them so they understand it. And you know, some of them you can tell them, and they just get it straight away. And others take a little bit of time, and you've got to show them every step of the way. But eventually, they get it. And yeah, that's sort of the challenge with it. And it's 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 good, and it's tiring, and it's stressful. But when you see the results at the end of the day, it's sort of pretty good. No different to uh, coaching kids, mate. So, Claude, yeah, is that yeah, the exactly. next step to put a put a women's team into a Sydney Metro comp and and in years to come have a women's um, division in Sydney Metro just to keep the the less Retention. elite, less motivated um, girls still involved in the game. Um, that has not actually come up. Um, what we do quite often talk about the possibility if if, uh, Baseball New South Wales had it or the Women's Baseball League element uh, would consider like a third grade would be so much um, easier for that, the more social aspect of it all. And then, you know, um, I I believe that would probably solve some of those. I won't say issues, but it might, you know, take that. You're talking about encouraging more people to stay in the game. Like I'm sure there's there's like, a lot of guys who, when they get to, you know, they get married, they have kids, they can't commit yeah. to to yeah, serious state level league. state league baseball. They go back and play. They've got an option. Park they can go play beer league. Um, so, there's no different with, with ladies. You know, do they yeah, have that so option to play something less? Funnily so, enough, well, uh, half of the girls that are spread out between the two Penrith teams all play the Saturday base park ball league anyway. So they're in mixed teams with be it their partners or their friends, and they'll be in a, a in a, a lower division. But for them, it's just that part is the social element. The Friday night is the serious, well, the seri- more serious element where it's that more competitive for the ladies. And then the Saturday, whilst still competitive, it's kind of, sh- it's like, it's beer league. You know, you could just have a yeah. knock back a drink and have a laugh and be social, be merry and hope to be, God. Be more relaxed. Competitive. A bit more relaxed, and yeah. and I guess like and obviously you now you run your program totally different to how Roger runs his program. 
Um, you know, Roger's out there yelling at him every week and, you know, getting frustrated, rings me up and goes, why do I bother? You know, it's all too hard. <laughs> uh, it's okay, mate. You know, I've had to talk him off my balcony at least twice, like things like that. Like, you know, like Keen, I Nothing know you're, like in, that. I know you're <laughs> intent, but Roger's next level. Like, you know, I've, I've never seen anything like it besides Samo, but that's a whole different show. <laughs> that, suggests, that suggests to me you're just passionate, so we'll See, leave it there. You wouldn't do it. You wouldn't do it if you didn't care. Yeah. Hundred percent. So, well, you've got no family, no family of your own plane, have you? So, this is no. your time purely because you're passionate enough to want to take that on, and you can see where it's going. So, yeah. yes, I think I think I think I see the same struggles as you guys um, with the younger girls coming up, and I think that's probably where some of the frustrations come from. You just go, ah, oh, if only they just knew a little bit more. And I, yeah. I like that you guys are, are looking at coaching the coaches, if that makes sense. I think that's yeah. that's a really great great thing to start with. Like that's that's pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah but that's not closed in, by the way. That's not just just yeah. Penrith. Like we, we with all our development programs that we've been running this year, we've opened it up to everyone. It's like so. Yeah. Even if you heard us doing that, and you're like, "Hey, Claude, I, I'm keen to a couple of parents out your way," or you know, to throw them in that program, happy days. Like because that's what we should be doing. We should be sharing that around like it's, it's not it's not exclusive and look, yeah, sorry, yeah, roger, i'm gonna put roger i'm gonna put you on the spot because i know that um <laughs> you know <laughs> recently appointed women's vp for women's league oh, so yes. um yep. congratulations. Oh, congratulations. Yeah, congratulations on that. Yeah. Um, i'm not sure if you know what you put yourself in for but um, oh, definitely not definitely not <laughs> But mate, we'll find out. Is, is uh, that something that you that you you know want to try to push through the, the women's league committee? Something in, you know in regards to that agenda that Claude's talking about? Is it something that that's a focus for yourself? Like obviously, you know, you're a player. You know, you've been a player. You, you coach women's league. Like, is that something that you'd be interested in doing, or is it something not on the radar? Or um, I think um, it's more. Uh, took a lot of information out of our strategic planning night actually. Yeah. That, it sort of opened my eyes a little bit more to, yeah. to sort of what we could plan and what, what could happen. Uh, one of the things we spoke about was a, like a coaching knowledge base where people mm -hmm. could like pick off uh, different drills and stuff like that. That's still something that I think Baseball New South Wales could probably even host on their website. So once you become a coach, you then get access to that, that information. So whether you're level A, B or C um, coach, you, you could access some information like that. I think that would be, you know, the first step um, to something that I would like to push I, to answer your question. I think that's that's a great start. Yeah, and, and Tim, obviously, you know, you sort of hooked up with the, you know, the, the old ball side of things. So, you know, how do, how do you guys sort of get around that? Like having new coaches come in, like how do you guys sort of... Yeah, so I guess, I mean, we're, we're a little bit lucky in terms of if you want to commit to... Um, what we're doing, um, we, we're sort of lucky enough to, to have lots of people wanting to get involved and it's not so much that first coach um, situation. So I, you know, the, the coaching situation in New South Wales needs, needs a, a bit of help. Um, all the things that Claude and, has said about, you know, that applies equally to, to every junior club uh, in the state. Um, but yeah, we are lucky enough at, at the level to have um, probably guys that may not even coach at a at a club level because of the, the either the frustration or the t extra time it takes. We can, we you know, we for say the mafia thing, we run on a couple of nights a week, a Saturday and a, and a Friday night. So we got guys like Cambo, um, yeah. like Josh, like um, Howie. And they'll come and, and give us that time because it's not a Tuesday, it's not a Saturday morning. Uh, we condense it a little bit, and it's sort of out of their season, so they can devote a bit more time. And they love coaching the kids, but you know they're they're still active players. And as as Ken will say, it's really hard to be an active player, train two nights a week, get your own hitting in, and then turn around and have to coach the women's league on a Friday night or a Saturday or. You know, there's a lot of conflicts there. So race yeah. from one game to another. So 
in in the stuff that Kevin and I put together, we're, we're lucky enough to um, sort of we're sort of taking a lot of the coaches that are at that next level already, and we yep. always team them up. So I coach with Ox because yep. I know nothing, and Ox knows lots. So you know that's how do you think I became a, a AYC pitching coach? Because I hang around with Ox, and people go, Tim must know what he's doing. Never thrown under, a, under a 80, baseball 80, 80, 80, in my life. Yeah, yeah no. Nah. But like, you know, but and that's and that's a different level. Like, I'm not AYC coaches are not teaching guys how to throw a curveball or a fastball. Yeah. We're working on making sure they're warm, making sure their mind's right, making sure the strategy's right, making sure they know what they're going into the game to do. That's a completely different skill than yeah. what you're talking about tonight, which is teaching people how to swing a baseball bat. Yeah, I'm a cricketer. I don't swing a baseball bat properly. I'm not going to teach any kid how to swing a baseball bat, but I'll teach them how to approach that bat, what to expect, have a look at, you know, the mentality of the side of it. That's a completely different skill. Um, you know, I've skipped the the how to do, how to pick up a ground ball. I mean, I did the course. Yeah. I'm left-handed. Yeah. How am I going to teach a shortstop how to pick up a ball and throw it to, to first base? In the coaching course, I had to do it right-handed. Well, that <laughs> – so, Hello? Like Gary Everson <laughs> shot me down when I was trying to do catching stuff. I'm a catcher, but I do everything back to front. And he yelled at me yeah. for being a left-handed catcher. Um, yeah, and rightly so. You know, <laughs> no, no I'll, I'll, I'll hold you up there. But there's, there's three spots there, for you, lefties. It, no, there's <laughs> not. There's lots of them. Well, the ball, what technically I'm, five, but you know, what I'm what I'm getting at three is three of them in the outfield. There's different skills that we can be teaching coaches as well. Yeah, There's some that. people that, that aren't there to teach the skill, but they want to get involved at a game, at a manager level, as a, you know, yeah. a bench coach. Really important position. Um, and that's where you can get other people who might not be 100% skilled at the technical game and still yeah. have them involved and they still add something. And that's, that's something that I really got into um, in the last couple of years. Um, I'm not there to teach kids how to pick up a ground ball because I'm going to do it wrong. Um, but I'll teach them how to approach the game, game yeah. circumstance, game situations, the right play, the wrong play, what were you thinking there, uh, that type of coaching, which is might be next level, but it's it, it flows all the way back down. It's just how you do it and coaching to is the there, right level of kid. Is there an opportunity, as you're saying that, my, my cogs were turning already thinking, why couldn't someone tag along or where you are doing AYC, where I'll, I'll use myself as an example, keen yep. as beans to go to the next level once I come out and step away as a player to become a female coach. So could I tag along for work experience, so to speak, yep. to an AYC um, training sessions and just work alongside, or oh, sorry, um, as experienced coaches. They're, yeah, they're, and, they're, and they're they're just very pick up that. So, little, is there very a, little stopping you? Yeah, that's so, what, so um, what I mean you, by I'll that. Just, uh, sorry, go on. While I'll I was watching you. here, I, they, I'll jump in, Joe. There's, there's yeah. actually in AYC, there's development coaches. Um, yeah. So, that is one aspect. I just saw something pop up about the women's game and the, just some announcements on Facebook about the. It was at the AYC for women, That's um, right. and yeah. and I see that there's development coaches in there as well. So that is that is something. Um, there's a lot of and I should, you know, it should ha happen. If it's not happening in the women's level, it should be happening the same as the men. So the New South Wales AYC team has got its coaching core staff. They've got two to three young guys who've either come back from college or not. You know. Around and they're helping out the the three to four coaches every week. Um, you know, there's a there's a catching specialist. So Sammy's is, is helping out with the catching, and Griff's helping out with the infield. That's teaching the 18, 19, 20, 21 year olds how to coach. That they already know how to play, yeah. and so there is there should be opportunities. If it needs to be formalised, you know, that's something we can. Yeah. We could talk about with Facebook so, New South Wales just to say, I, come along to a training to and watch us run it. I think I'd be able to help you out with that, Claude. Um, I'll, I'll give everyone an exclusive. So I've actually spoken to the CEO of Facebook New South Wales. 
and um, he's agreed to come on our show after Christmas. So um, I'll ask a question then. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and, this, and, and that was sort of that was sort of what I was trying to touch on about coaching coaches. Like, there's there's so much stuff in baseball that you can't learn off those the coaching <laughs> programs that they give you in terms of you know like they they show how, they have Altuve showing you how to hit like you know what I mean like you don't learn anything off that the guy can't teach you everything you need to know how to hit in two minutes or five minutes whatever it is that type of thing is what I mean by coaching coaches like obviously club level you're probably not going to teach your hitters you know your mental approaches to stuff but if you can dial down all your plays and stuff like that and when they're hitting their rep levels and then their state league levels that's when they should be getting drilled yeah. and start really getting in depth into the baseball because like you said when we go play in the states we're not even close like these kids are learning this way earlier than what we're ever learning it and yeah and that's where I think we fail as coaches is that guys like you 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 coach with like Oxy like that guy has the best baseball brain in Australia, like one of the best brains in Australia, right? And it's because of the experience he's had. He's he's done so much in baseball that, and he's been not just like a big league player, but he's also been like a big league coach. Like he's he's done all of that. So yep. his experience and his knowledge needs to be sort of shared with everyone. And um, I'm not saying Oxy needs to go to everyone's you know club and go. All right, you have to spend four hours with Oxy, but no, it's, you know it's like the it? other. It's the other way. It's it's yeah. having people come in and just watch what he does. That's how I learned. That's it. Um, that's yeah. it. But another, I, just to pick up on something, and I can give you a, you know, something that's worked for us really well, and you might be able to work into a program or a, or a, you know, development type thing. So, what we did in last year's Mafia, which was like a travel ball thing we ran during winter, we actually yeah. coached during the game. So yeah. we have four experienced coaches. We're playing a game. Um, yeah. They count at the end, but they're not. It's not about winning every single yeah. night, every single game. We will stop a game and go and coach at in the moment. So you've got kids varying ages. When they walk off, you miss. You know, they'll say, "Oh, what happened three outs ago?" And they go, "Oh, I don't yeah. remember." We stop them and go, "Right, next time, this is the way you handle that situation or that play." Or yeah, you know, we'll talk guy when they've just had that bat what were you trying to do you had less than two outs you know runners at you know at, at the corners you know you you're down by a run what should you be looking to do there and the answer isn't hit at 500 feet over center field that's um that sort of thing during a game has has really helped i think i helped our guys a lot and girls yeah um yeah learn at the spot you can't do it on a saturday when you're playing a comp round where every win counts. You can't do yeah. it state legal. I'm not talking about that, but find opportunities where you can coach in the game, and yeah, that that pays out a lot of benefits. Yeah, we already we already do that type of stuff in our in our training sessions. Um, it's not to that level of having two teams going at each other, but it's um, they're sort of just scrimmage matches where I'll take the pitching machine on the onto the mound and. I put them in situations and set them up with situational stuff and go, right, this is what's happening. This is what you have to do to get out of that. And then, so it's the same thing. It's just not a game. That's where they learn. Yeah, yeah. But and we that, can, and, that and that's, just helps. and yeah, you get to stop it, break down what they should have done and what they could have done better. And it helps them more than anyone could know because, you know, standing there and hitting them a ground ball 150 <laughs> times teaches them how to pick up a ground ball, but it doesn't teach them the million plays that you could make off that ground ball. Yeah, yeah. So, and coaching in the moment, you know, Cavs had some grand plans about having catches um, mic'd up or, you know, having a speaker in their ear so you can have a, a Howie teaching them how to call a game. That's yeah. next level. Um, yeah. But those types of things is what we're trying to think about just to improve the coaching and the coaching of the coaches. Um to that side of side of level, and it's going to take years and years to 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 get it to work. But you know, they're the types of things that we're learning to do things a bit different, which you know yeah. you're already doing. So yeah, you, one... just, you got to try and change it, right? Otherwise, players get bored. Yeah, you, know? you got to you got to try and keep it different all the time. Otherwise, guys are just going to 
they're going to fall asleep and they're not going to pay attention. They're not going to get everything they need to get out of a training session. I, I guess one of the things, Keen, that, you know, I always sort of learnt off one of, one of the greatest coaches I've ever coached under is um, Samo. It's about, you know, varieties of sports of life. Yeah. Um, he'd always, he'd always change things up. It was never the same. It was never the same every week. It was always something different. No, uh, and, that's, and that's what I try and bring to my training because, like I said, like being coached by these guys. Um, sorry, I'm just my phone's dying, so I'm trying to get some cords to charge it. But um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's exactly that. You got to try and keep it different for everyone. Otherwise, keep it fresh. people start falling asleep, and you don't get out of a training session what you should yeah. be getting out of a training session, yeah. mentally and physically. You know what I mean? So, but Claude, I, I sort of just want to touch on this one one important thing um, because you know, look, it's a huge thing that I saw. And look, you know, I, I know this went, you know, to the media and it went viral and all that sort of stuff. But um, the she devils thing, how how did how did that come about? Because I, I know that it sort of it went a little bit viral and um, you know, some good, some bad. But look, at the end of the day, I guess um, the way the way I look at it is any publicity for baseball is good publicity. Um, you know, it is what it is. But um, yeah, just can you talk us through that? How that whole thing happened? Yeah, look, we had um, a various amount of uh, young girls, I guess, interested in in the state champ rookies um, the previous year, and um, were trialing, um, and they didn't quite make it, unfortunately, in the in the GWB. A side of things. Um, I think at the time, perhaps we believed that uh, they may d- design an all girls side or derive from that uh, because there was a lot of interest. Um, and perhaps at the time they thought maybe they couldn't get the numbers. But in the end, uh, we ended up coming together with Plumpton because there was a lot of interest from them. And I think they felt let down by the whole um, not running. To that, they felt a bit. I guess we all felt a little bit unsupported there uh, by GWBA, and it kind of it did it did blow up a bit viral wise. Uh, it shouldn't have probably gotten as far as it did, but it did, yeah. um, and hence why She Devils became what they were. So it was the two teams comprising of Penrith and Plumpton. Um, great work there from Kathy Bedford. Just picked up the ball right from the get-go and and ran ran with it and we just aligned and we just – it just worked. It came into unison really quickly. Um, and then they went to the rookies comp and they just they just put themselves out there. They got on the radar. Uh, whilst they na- didn't really get anywhere in the competition, uh, they put themselves on the radar and they were noticed – and um, and it sort of flourished from there because now those existing players from the She Devils have kind of come together and they're in teams wanting to build on developments and you know tournaments. The Archer Cup that's just passed, uh, majority of those same girls were competing in that again. Um, so there's kind of like a that that trend now that they've they've done it like we've done it. So now we can keep going with it. And I think um, I want to say that going forward with this is basically livened up the whole young girls element for tournaments now. And I, yeah. I want to say Greater Western at one point there they wanted I, I do believe that they wanted to run um, some form of develop, development. I think Claire Manuel reached out at one stage there, and I think she wanted to form something there where to kind of um, grow the the league for women's or the yeah. young girls. But, yeah. So it put everything on the radar and, and, and now we're sort of just moving forward with it all. So, yep. yeah. Um, one thing I wanted to do is um, quickly touch on the um, women's state league competition results. Um, Roger, you can probably look away, mate. So <laughs> what's going on there? Like... Gone from the penthouse uh, to the uh, doghouse, but um, we, were, we weren't up at the penthouse, but yeah, yeah. Lost, but um, Finn, Finn, what's going on with this six-game winning streak? Oh, 
It's it's been good, man. Uh, honestly, the it's 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 good to finally see the ladies get the results that they they should have had for a long time. Yeah. Um, it's been a long time of just you know hammering them. Come on, come on. We you know got to cut out these beginnings. We got to yeah. we got to start creating the beginnings and keeping the momentum with us and changing it with us. And yeah, I mean, like we the first game of the season, they come out of the gates great. Um, they they won and and they won well. And then we had a maybe even like a four game losing streak even um, yeah. in that middle part. And um, I sort of changed my attitude as a coach because I seen that the way I probably approached the first two losses was probably a little bit, um, a little bit too much. And I yeah. apologize for that. And I don't know, I, I get hot at it. Like, like I said, like Rog, Rog knows exactly what it's like. Um, I'm very competitive. I love to win. I'm not saying that's everything about the game, but you know, like, that's what I like to do, and I, I like to I like to be competitive. Um, but yeah, I, I changed my approach, and I think my approach has probably helped them a bit as well. And um, yeah. yeah, they just went on a tear; like they just did exactly what they should have done. Um, they had six games in a row where, like, I, I couldn't really fault what they did. You know, there's obviously those real little intricacies that you can find, but I mean, yeah. on a whole of a game, like it's a 99 percent. Like, just you guys have done unbelievable, and. Yeah, and they did that, and they just did that, and did that, and did that, and yeah, they had a mad winning streak. It was sick to see. Like I was really happy for them because um, they trained their ass off, and they deserve it. I hope you gave it to Roger. Uh, no, no, I've, <laughs> I've known Rog for a long time. Like I, <laughs> I have a lot of love for Rog. I couldn't do that to him. Um, but yeah, I mean, everyone's been there. Like yeah, you know, everyone's been at the bottom of the table. I, I'm not like that. I, I don't think I could ever really give anyone shit for being at the bottom of the table because we've all been there. No one likes to be there, but, you know, like you have a few players leave or you have a few injuries or whatever happens, you know what I mean, and and, and you're down there before you know it. So, um, yeah, I'll never give it to Rog because, I mean, you know what, his girls are young and give it two or three years and they're going to be up the top with us. And, and yeah, like it's it's, it's just a big cycle thing, man. But um, at the moment, we're just going to ride the high. So how long how long till we see you over in the other column, mate, playing first grade? Um, I'm hoping really soon. I mean, yeah. it's been in the it's been in the background in the back of my mind for a long time now. Yeah. Uh, with Claude, like we both wanted this. Um, we had two teams a while ago that uh, pre COVID that you know that was the start. Like that was where we we're going to start building that second team for um, or the first team for first grade. Have you want to look at it? Um, but again, like I said, you lose a few players, and that's what we did. We lost a few players, and they went elsewhere. Uh, they got a taste of first grade, and they they wanted to stay in that, and that's that's their decision, and that's cool. But it sort of hurt us because we lost those key players that we were trying to build off. Um, and then last year was the same thing. I had a couple of key players that we probably could have definitely used in first grade, and again they left and went elsewhere. And that, like I said, it's again it's. It's up to them, you know. It's their career, it's their lives. Like, do what do what you feels best. Um, but I think this year we've got a lot of young kids, a lot of really good young talent coming through, and I'm really hoping it, it'll be either you know next year or that it'll definitely be the next year after. But it just, yeah. yeah, I really hope it's this year, this next year coming. Um, but yeah, it's 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 just it's hard to find stately quality like first grade stately quality women. Yeah, and that's what I keep saying. Like, you can't just. You can't pull nine of them out of out of a hat. You know what I mean. You got to you got to grow them, and that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to grow all our younger ones, and even some of the older ones. I mean, some of the older ones are still up there to to play first grade. They can they can run around their own park pretty well. So, yeah, it's definitely it's definitely in the near future for us. So I um, guess the next question is, what's your salary cap, Claude? <laughs> <laughs> it's about as big as the rabbitos. <laughs> I thought Boy, the like, um. The uh, rooster's sombrero, but anyway, that's uh, that's fine. <laughs> no, we don't want that. We don't want that. <laughs> hey, look, um, before we go, we, we do a thing on this show called uh, 60 Seconds of Judo, and um, look, it's uh, it's pretty intense. Roger still holds, oh. the, uh, Roger still holds the record for this, it's at uh, three, three minutes 15 seconds because uh, oh, beauty. That's what Roger does. Yeah. Things down two minutes fifteen. So I think we'll start with Claude because um, ladies first, of course. Yeah, be rude not to. So um, Claude, your 
time will start at the beginning at the end of the sorry the end of my first question. So, Claude, your nickname. Oh, that's easy. That's Fakatane. <laughs> <laughs> Occupation. Uh, chef. Favorite food at the ballpark. Ooh, chips. Pine Hot chips. Pine pineapple on pizza. Pineapple. Favorite baseball field you've played on? Um, Diamond one at Bisp. Favorite teammate? <sighs> That'd have to be Ree. Ree and Fulham. Least favorite teammate? Um, no, nah, that one's too hard. Can I pass? Yeah, least favorite oh. coach. Oof. Um, no, nah, I don't know. I have pass on there too. I don't have one. You can say me. You can say favorite, me. Favorite coach. <laughs> favorite coach? That'd be Pete Godbold. Okay. Favorite baseball saying? Uh, I don't know. And last, the last question is: Will the Bulldogs play finals in twenty twenty four? Couldn't tell you. I can't predict. Okay. Well, hey, Queen, you ready? As I love a bee. Can't wait for this. <laughs> okay. Nickname? Uh, Rig, Chi-Chi, Howie. Kevin. Occupation? Yeah. Chippy. Favourite food at the ballpark? Uh, anything that I can eat. <laughs> <laughs> Pineapple on pizza? That's a no-go. Pineapple does oh, not deserve to be on pizza. Favorite baseball plot field you've played on? Uh, field Castle Hill Knights. Stop it. Any <laughs> 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 yeah, bombs? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Favorite, <laughs> favorite teammate? Oh man, that's too hard. I've played with it's a lot of It's got to be Jake hasn't it? Come on. Oh, I love Cobby. Yeah, Cobby's a great yeah. team, but yeah, yeah, we'll go, hey, Cobby. Um, most annoying teammate? Oh, it's got to be Hello. But he's a funny uh, bloke. Most intense teammate. Oh God. Maybe like Edo's Edo's guidements. <laughs> um, now, this, this, now this can be controversial because I know of at least two of your coaches that are watching this at the moment. <laughs> um, favorite coach. Of course you would say it now. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> I had a lot of good coaches, so this Come is on, a really, it's a really <laughs> hard one. But um, look, if, I know you've got to play Phil Hemmer, so you're going to start in first grade. I get that, but <laughs> <laughs> no, no, um, yeah, like I've, I mean, really feels like a mate. I've played with him before, but um, yeah. I probably think like it's either got to be JD, like, or it's got to be Samo. But um, yeah, both of them, like really good guys and just know so much about baseball and just give so much. So, yes, yeah. it's only going to be JD or Summer. Both aren't watching, so don't like well, That's all right then, so it's not then. <laughs> um, Walk-up song, Pian. Huh. What's What's that? What, what, what Walk-up song what? Well, what's your what favourite? Oh, it's what, Chains. What it's got to be what? Chains. Yeah, it used to be Chains by um, Crisley. Oh, dear. Um, but, uh, favorite favorite baseball saying? Uh, get them on, get them over, get them in. <laughs> yeah, now, Queen, there's, there's two more questions we have for you. Oh, we can not pass them in, and I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, there's, there's two more questions we have before we go because now Roger has one of them and he just wants to relive on something, and I want to re relive on something also. So, Roger, you want to ask me a question, mate? Um, Can't wait. I want to know what happened to the to the beautiful blue bat. <laughs> um, I'd say it probably got snapped in one of those uh, youth moments where I just, like I said, I got heated because I failed and it probably got snapped. But I, I replaced mate, that, it. You'll be happy to know I replaced it with a pink bat now. So good. that was the best. That was the coolest looking bat I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, I think that's that's the only person's opinion of that one. <laughs> like, like some of the bats you still order off me which horrible, horrible. <laughs> <laughs> mate um, now I, I just wanted to share with you a lot of people don't know that you're a pitcher 
mate. So um, I, just, <laughs> I, just, I just thought if you could share the story um, of one hot summer day in Penrith when um, Chi Chi was on the mound. You just want to share that story, mate. Uh, look, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to bore well, you guys, but um, it won't yeah, take I mean, long. Yeah, no, one. I was only three pitches, and um, eight of the best three I've ever thrown. So, yeah, I mean, you know, if the Blue Sox are looking, if they need a short reliever, really, really short reliever, or even a really short closer, like I'm here, just us on the papers, just a specialist, you know. So, <laughs> we just give a little bit of context. Um, <laughs> it was second grade, wasn't it, Keaton? Second grade. Yeah, I think so. Second grade, and um. We are written in our arms and we're like, oh shit, who are we gonna use? We've got no pitches. And he's keen at second base going, Oh, I'll pitch. And we're like, Oh, we can't be any worse. And ah. we need to win, we need to win the game, right? And Keen's throwing these absolute bullets down in his warm ups. So I thought, oh shit, this actually looks all right. And he throws a total of three pitches, walks off the mound, he goes, This has pitch and tie, this shit's easy. Yeah. Walk the dugout, we win the game and Keen's a hero. <laughs> won't talk about his next outing, but will we? No, we won't talk about any other pitching outings ever. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I guess look, one of my most favourite moments ever at Penrith was a, um, a windy summer's day when we were playing <laughs> Central Coast. We had a scoreline of 28-26. I think everyone, yeah. in the lineup, everyone in the lineup had been home run. It was a ridiculous day. I've, I've, we, a ball was going 20 foot foul and was blowing over fair. It was just one of those most unbelievable days I've ever seen at that ballpark. So, um, yeah, yeah, it was, it was the same day Jono hit one about 700 foot, I think. It's the biggest yeah. ball I've ever seen hit in my life. Wow. Yeah. But, um, yeah, fun times. Look, guys, um, look, thanks for tonight. Really appreciate it, and it's, it's really good to get an insight into into clubs and, and how they work and how they operate. It's um it's also good to sort of get the story of you know the people behind the scenes of, of what makes it tick and make, what makes it work. Um, you know, I, I can't thank you guys enough, and um, look, Claude, all the best for um the rest of your season. Thank you. Um, appreciate you having us on. Not a problem. And Keen, I'd like to wish you luck when you play for Borco. So, <laughs> you know. yeah, look. Everyone hates the winners, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> but, mate, but, uh, I actually believe... No, I really appreciate you guys having us on. Like Claude said, um, it's been mad fun. Um, and, yeah, it's, 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 I appreciate it having Penrith on and so we could share what we're doing over there. And, you know, hopefully it might help some other clubs out. Yeah, definitely. And so, no, I really appreciate it, guys. Tim, you got anything? No, no, that's, thank you for giving us your time and... and- giving us a bit of insight, especially into um, the women's side of things. Really good. And, and I've, we've lost, and we've lost Rog again, have we? I'd like to Roger and see Roger any questions, but obviously Roger doesn't. Um, this, is probably <laughs> the longest, this has probably been the longest um, podcast Roger's been on, so oh, probably a new okay. record for him. <laughs> <laughs> but um, too easy, guys. Uh, all we're going to do now is uh, wrap it up. But um, look, thanks for joining us. Look, we're having a short break over Christmas. Uh, I do believe Roger's coming to my place near New Year's Eve. So um, there could be a, a special extra base podcast back, New Year's back. Eve edition from my oh, place. Oh, that's that so, could, what um, could go wrong. Oh, lots <laughs> could go wrong. There's plenty of drink going on. But uh, yeah, Roger's, Roger and I could be doing a New Year's Eve special from um, from the Alfresco. I'll be tuning in, guys. I'll be tuning in. Yeah. Right, guys. Um, right. We'll let you go and um, look, everyone, have a, a very Merry Christmas and we will see you in the new year. Thank you. Yes, you too. God, Thank you, you everyone. Merry guys. Christmas. Towards the corner, it's going to one hop.